Hello everybody. Uh, today I would like to talk about adding sine waves and look at interference, uh, both constructive interference as well as destructive interference as a function of phase offset uh, between uh, two sine waves. And in order to do so, I would, look, uh, would like to use the phase calculator. And in the heart of our phase calculator, we will find the familiar oscilloscope. Oscilloscope is time domain showing you amplitude over time, where amplitude is shown on the y-axis, uh, uh, linear scale, no decibels whatsoever, linear scale with a zero value in the middle, goes all the way to plus two at the top and drops to negative two at the bottom. Uh, time, however, is not expressed in milliseconds or seconds, but is expressed in degrees phase. And for a single sine wave to complete uh, uh, one revolution, it has to complete a 360 degree revolution um, to be uh, to, to, to get back where, where it started. Um, so 360 degrees of phase um, to express time rather than seconds and uh, milliseconds. And in our oscilloscope, we have two waveforms, uh, two sine waves, if you will. There are sine wave A and sine wave B, where B is blue. And the only reason that we cannot see sine wave A is because it's currently living underneath sine wave B. Sine wave B is masking sine wave A, so to speak. But if I temporarily introduce a um, phase offset, uh, 30 degrees, then cuckoo, okay. Now we see B shift, the blue sine wave shifted, uh, revealing sine wave A, the green one, which was living underneath it. Okay, so let's take that offset out. They end up living on top of each other again. And in the oscilloscope, we can add A and B together. And that is a simple matter of addition and uh, subtraction, primarily addition in this case. Because let's look over here at our waveforms. Uh, both A and B have the same amplitude. They have a value of one at that particular point in the waveform. And surely if we add one and one together, we get something which is twice as tall. And therefore the peak to peak ratio, the ratio of this peak with respect to the ratio of those peaks is currently two to one. And as you're well aware, uh, a two to one ratio, which is shown over here, uh, of the red sine wave, which is the sum of A and B together, a ratio of two to one is an increase of six decibels. So two sine waves that live perfectly on top of each other and are equally loud will gain uh, six decibels when added together with a zero degree offset at equal loudness. These are the, uh, these are the um, requirements for that six to be increase in level. However, there's also another way of looking at um, this kind of um, interaction. And for that, I would like to go to the phaser scope, which is another way of visualizing the same uh, phenomena. Um, the phaser scope um, shows us phasers, where phasers are uh, is a portmanteau, uh, which is the uh, addition of two words uh, together. It's a portmanteau of the word phase and the word vector. And if you take the first syllable of the word phase and the last syllable of the word vector, you are going to get a uh, phase vector, you're going to get phasor. And if we think of those signals, those sine waves as phasors with a certain magnitude, and a certain direction, then it greatly simplifies the understanding of adding uh, adding those signals uh, together. So right now we have our uh, B signal, which is masking our A signal. They have the same direction, the same orientation, and both signals have the same length, the same magnitude. So surely if we add two of those segments together, we're going to get something which is twice as long, twice as tall. Again, a two to one ratio, a six to B increase. However, we can introduce a phase offset, and that phase offset, let's do 30 degree once more, on the oscilloscope will cause a shift, because our major divisions are 90 degree divisions, whereas our uh, minor divisions are uh, 30 degree divisions. So these are 30 degree divisions. And if we look at our sine waves, then we see that B has been shifted to the right by one minor division. So everywhere we look, it's moved over in time by 30 degrees which is of course uh, different amounts of time for different frequencies, but the same principle applies. It's moved over in time by 30 degrees everywhere we see the same 30 degree shift. That angle can also be observed on a phaser scope, in which case it is literally a 30 degree angle between uh, my A phaser and my B phaser. That is the 30 degree angle, the same 30 degree angle 
uh, between my phasers. On the phaser scope, we call it a phase angle. On the oscilloscope, I tend to call it a phase shift because it's the shifting of the phases. And if you apply your parallelogram, which some of you might have learned during physics, then you can add those two together and calculate the length of the sum, the resultant, and surely that one is no longer going to be equally long as it was when both phasers were pointing in the same direction. And this is the interaction that I would like to study. So um, if we start to uh, introduce a phase offset, my B phasor is going to go uh, counterclockwise and sooner or later it will come back where it began. It will have finished a single revolution after 360 degrees, which only leaves 358 intermediate values to look at. So let's um, reset our, uh, our, our phase offset and let's start from here. We are equally loud, we have match levels, um, and that means that if we add our sine waves together, we get twice the amount of amplitude, and two times more amplitude is a 6 dB increase. My peak-to-peak -peak ratio is 2 to 1 at this point. That's uh, twice the amount of amplitude, and twice the amount of amplitude is a 6 dB increase. So what changes if we now start to incrementally add phase offset? Maybe 10 degrees, maybe 20 degrees, Let's go to 30 degrees, let's go to 40 degrees, let's go to 50 degrees. Now let's stop at our first milestone, 55 degrees. With 55 degrees, we're saying that the angle between my two phasers is currently 55 degrees. That is the 55 degree angle on the phaser scope. It is very easy to see. There's the 55 degree angle. And 55 is of course close to 60, it's it's five degrees shy of 60, and 60 would be two minor divisions. That would be 60 degrees. So everywhere we see the 55 degree shift, we're seeing a shift of almost two minor divisions, which would be a 60 degrees. We're not there yet, um, but almost. This is 55 degree shift, shift on the oscilloscope and the phase angle on the uh, phaser scope. Now, why do I stop at 55? What is so special about 55 degrees? Well, notice the summation, okay? At um, 55 degrees, we're in the process of adding uh, 0.9, roughly 0.9 over here for both A and B. Those are their values at that point in the waveform. We're adding 0.9 and 0.9 together, which no longer gives us two, but gives us 1.8. That is 1.8 times more than either A or B alone. So the ratio of the peak in the sum signal, which is our red, our red waveform, with respect to the peaks of either A or B together, that is now a ratio or factor, if you will, of 1.8, telling us that the peak of the red sine wave is 1.8 times taller than the peak of either A or B alone. And what is so special about that value, Del? Well, 1.8 in decibels turns out to be exactly 5 decibels, no more, no less. And now you see the appeal of 55 degrees, because at 55 degrees, you are going to get exactly 5 decibels, no more, no less. An easy to remember 5, 5, 5. At 55 degrees, 5 decibels of summation. It's one to be less than you would have had with zero degrees of offset, but it's still five decibels of summation. So you've lost one to be where one to be on average is the just noticeable difference for level for um, level. So this is barely noticeable to, uh, you know, vast majority of all people out there in, in, in the world. Um, 55 degrees, still five decibels of summation, five, five, five. Okay, what if we increase our offset and go to 60 and then go to 70 and go to 80 and then we reach our next milestone, which is 90 degrees. At 90 degrees, for those that understand the Pythagorean theorem, it should be readily apparent what the level will be of both signals summed together. After all, for those that remember that A square plus B square equals C square, we should be able to apply that, you know, and figure out what the length is of the so-called resultant, because A and B are now at a straight angle with respect to each other. 
And this is uh, a length of one, this is a length of one, and one to the power of two equals one, and the same goes for the other guy. So this is the, um, the uh, length of that phasor, the resultant will be the square root of two. And the square root of two happens to be 1.4. If we put that into a calculator, if we take the square root of two by pressing two, square root we indeed get 1.4 so there you see the proof of concept okay there is the 1.4 and that value that we have over here is also shown over here in the information regarding the sum of a and b and 1.4 to 1 telling us that this peak is 1.4 times taller it's about ratios telling us that this peak is 1.4 times taller than either A or B alone. That's a factor again, a factor of 1.4, tells us that with uh, 90 degrees of offset, you only get three decibels of summation, no longer six, because in order to have six, you need to have a zero degree offset. And at this point, you have a 90 degree offset. And there's a very easy way to remember uh, that milestone, which is to think of a clock. We all know that if this is a clock, then these arrows could represent the hands of the clock. And if this is 12 o'clock at the top of the uh, clock, then this puts us at three o'clock. And between the hands of the clock, there is a uh, three to be offset. Uh, there's a, a 90 degree angle, <laughs> a 90 degree angle between the hands of the clock. And that means that at 90 degrees, you are gonna get um, at three, at three o'clock, you're going to get three decibels, three o'clock, uh, three decibels. That's how you can memorize. Very convenient. Three o'clock, three decibels, 90 degree face angle, 90 degree offset. Okay. So let's go beyond 90 degrees. Let's go to a hundred degrees and then continue to 110 degrees and stop at the next milestone, the third milestone, which is gonna be 120 degrees. Because at 120 degrees, something uh, interesting happens. Notice that if I draw an imaginary line over the peaks of all signals, that the peak-to-peak -peak ratios of all those signals remains one over one. Everywhere we look, we see a one-to-one -one ratio. And that means that if we sum these two signals together, we don't gain anything and we don't lose anything. The level stays the same. It's also very easy to see in our, uh, in our um, uh, phasor scope. It's easy to see that with a 120 degree angle, this is the 120 degree angle that we're talking about, that the resultant has the same length, the same magnitude as either A or B alone. And the way that I remember this, the rule of thumb that I remember this, is that I always have to think of three phase utility power, where the phase angle between the three phases is 120 degrees, because that is how the um, coils in the generator have been arranged. That's how I remember that 120 degrees doesn't gain you anything, but it also doesn't lose you anything. So you see you're, you're on, uh, the, on, it's the point where the skills tip from constructive interference to destructive interference. Up to 120 degrees, you have as little as zero decibels at 120 degrees to as much as six decibels at zero degrees and anything in between, but up to 120 degrees, there is constructive interference there is summation. And you can already tell what is going to happen if we venture beyond 120 degrees because now we start to witness the onset of destructive interference where we get less out of it than we put into it. Destructive interference. And if we hit our next milestone, which is 150 degrees, you should be able to appreciate that the sum is now two times less tall than either A or B alone. If we draw a line over the peaks of the sum, we see that we have 50% less amplitude than the amplitude of either A or B alone. So we're looking at a ratio of uh, one to two, okay, or two to one, where the sum is two times less tall than either A 
or B alone. And if you lose 50%, then that is functionally a 6 to B reduction. So now we see 6 decibels of destructing interference. You can also see it on the phaser scope. On the phaser scope, this is the uh, 150 degree angle. There we have the 150 degree angle. And notice that the resultant is two times shorter than either A or B alone. So now we are starting to lose summation destructive interference. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, let's go to 160 degrees. Let's go to 170 degrees. And then we're about to arrive at our next, next milestone, which is 180 degrees. And surely what is happening over here should no longer come at a surprise. At 180 degrees, we have sine waves that are mirror images of each other. When we have plus one in sine wave A, it means negative one in sine wave B. When we have plus one in sine wave B, it means negative one in sine wave B. B. Uh, and we're A. And wherever we look, we see them cancel each other out. And that means that no matter where we look, we see perfect cancellation. Same is true on the phaser scope. This is now the 180 degree phase angle between A and B. And uh, I call it the tug of war. I imagine two people uh, pulling on both sides of a piece of rope. These people are clones from each other. They're equally strong, equally potent. One guy wants to go to the right. The other guy wants to go to the left. Nobody's going anywhere. And they cancel each other out. Uh, what does um, cancellation zero, because everywhere we look, we have a value of zero. What does uh, zero become in decibels? Well, zero in decibels technically goes to minus infinity. I cannot show you minus infinity within the limitations of Excel, but suffice it to say that the negative 318.2 decibels is pretty silent. But theoretically, this should be minus infinity. And here's how you can memorize. Imagine that you have a self-powered loudspeaker and you take out the XLR connector. If you take out the XLR connector out of the back of the self-powered loudspeaker, you're inserting no volts, you're inserting zero volts into the loudspeaker. And out of the other end comes an infinite amount of silence. And that is how I memorize that zero is negative infinity, an infinite amount of silence. Cancellation. Okay, so let's go beyond 180 degrees. Let's go to 190. Let's go to 200 and then stop at the next milestone, which will be 210. Now there's nothing special about 210. Everything that's see, that we see in front of us is, is, is uh, straightforward if you are mindful of the following property. Notice that if we take 360 degrees for a full revolution and we subtract the current 210 degrees, that we're left over with 150 degrees. And that tells us that 210 and 150 degrees are so-called so conjugate angles. Conjugate angles. They complement each other. And that means that uh, together they will always uh, form, they will always uh, form uh, 360 degrees. Over here you see the same, you see the same 210 degree angle. And what happens with conjugate angles is that the amount of summation that you have is identical. At 210 degrees, we get the same amount of summation as at 150 degrees. And at 150 degrees, the summation was destructive. We started to see losses. Uh, we ended up at minus six. Well, the same is true for 210 degrees. And just to show that, let me go back to 150 degrees. And at 150 degrees, we will see the same values as at 210 degrees. So once you know half of this story, you essentially get the other half of the story for free. Okay, so let's continue to 20 and then to 230. And then ultimately we're gonna stop at 240. Again, 240 brings us to that special place where the peaks of all sine waves are the same, which reminds me of another instance where we saw this. So let's figure this out. 360 degrees minus the current 240 degrees leaves me with 120 degrees, informing me that 240 and 120 degrees are again conjugate, conjugate uh, angles. And that means that if I know what happens at the 120, I can tell you what happens at 
240, where this is now the 240 degree angle uh, that I'm talking about. We can also see it. We can also see it in uh, in the phase shift because everywhere we look, we see that there is 120. What I am saying, this is 120, two minor divisions. This is another 120. So that is 240 degrees of shift. No matter where I look, we see 240 degrees of shift. And again, we don't gain anything. We don't lose anything. Okay, the value, the ratio, the peak to peak ratio remains one on one. So it's again at that point where the skills tip from destructive interference to constructive interference. And the resultant has the same length as either A or B alone. However, if we venture beyond 240 and we go to 250 and then 260 and then 270, at 270 we should be able to predict what goes on because this situation looks remarkably similar to a situation that we saw before let's reason this there are 360 degrees in a whole revolution 360 degrees in a whole revolution let's subtract 270 degrees and if i'm not mistaken this should leave us with 90 degrees once more and i know what happens at 90 degrees because 90 degrees was three o'clock and at three o'clock you are gonna get three decibels and these are again conjugate angles. That is the key word, conjugate angles. It suffices to only know one and then you get the other for free. Conjugate angles. So if you get three decibels at three o'clock, you are gonna get three decibels at nine o'clock, if you will. Let's put that to the test. Let's see whether these values are indeed the same. This is 90 degrees, gives me three decibels, sure. This is 270, which is its conjugate angle, and it's also three decibels, as we can tell from the panel containing the information about the sum of A and B. So far, so good. 280 would be the next step, and then we go to 290, and then we go to 300, and now I'm gonna stop at 305. Because what is so special about 305? Well, let's see if we can reason that. Let's take 360 degrees, subtract the current 305 degrees, which leaves us with 55 degrees. And I know what happens at 55 degrees because that is 555, five, five, as in 555. Five, five. 55 degrees gives you five decibels. 55 degrees gives you five decibels decibels easy to memorize these are conjugate angles once more and that means that if you know if you know what happens at 55 for which there's an easy rule of thumb you can tell me what happens at 305 and look over here lo and behold at 305 we get the same five decibels of summation as 55 degrees and here you have the 305 degrees of uh face angle between A and B. So let's prove that by alternating between 55 and 305. This is 55, this is 305, and the values do not change. That is to say, the amount of interference, constructive interference, five decibels, does not change. Okay, let's continue to 310, 320, 330, 340, 350, I'm 10 degrees shy of finishing a complete revolution and by the time I hit 360, my blue phaser, my signal B, has completed a single round trip. It's once more pointing in the same direction and for steady state, for solid state signals, if these two guys are pointing in the same direction, then one and one becomes two, and we're back at our starting position where we have twice the amount of amplitude as either A or B alone, and twice the amount of amplitude is a six to B increase. You are in time 360 degrees or one cycle out of phase. In time, but out of phase, six decibels of summation. As long as you're pointing in the same direction, you are gonna get six decibels. If I were to make this uh, 720 degrees or two cycles, the graphics are not expected to change. Again, six decibels. However, you're in phase and two cycles out of time. 
If I make this 1080, the graphics are not expected to change. You're in phase, but three cycles out of time. If I make this 1440, which would be four cycles, the graphics do not change. You are in phase, but four cycles out of time. And that is uh, this explanation, today's explanation of adding sine waves and uh, looking at the, the destructive and the constructive interference. Uh, all of this can be, uh, can be summarized in a single chart, which is what we call the phase wheel. When you live at the phase wheel, you will get six. When your phasers are pointing in the same direction, have equal length, are equally loud, you will get six decibels. If your sine waves are overlapping without any shift, you will get six decibels. However, by the time you have a 55 degree offset, then 555, which is the rule of thumb, 555 tells me that at 55 degrees phase offset, I get five decibels of summation. By the time I am at three o'clock, which I can easily memorize, by the time I'm at three o'clock, which is 90 degrees, I'm going to get three decibels, which is three decibels of summation. It's three decibels less than the six I would have had with zero degrees, but it's still three decibels of summation. At 120 degrees, the scales start to tip. Where we had constructive interference before, we are now going into the domain where we start to see destructive interference. Because at 150 degrees, we lose six decibels, and that is called destructive interference. Now we get less out of it than we put into it. At the bottom of the phase wheel, we are at 180 degree offset, half a cycle. And now in theory, we should go off the scale. We should go all the way to minus infinity to perfect silence. However, if we continue our journey, then 210 becomes the conjugate angle of 150 degrees. After all, 210 and 150 together sum up to 360. So we see the same amount of destructive interference as 60 dB loss. By the time we hit 240, which is the conjugate angle of 120, we're back at zero. So now the scales start to tip once more from de-instructive interference in the bottom of the phase wheel to constructive interference at the top of the phase wheel. At nine o'clock, at nine o'clock, we have the conjugate angle of 90 degrees. After all, 270 and 90 together make for 360 degrees. So at three o'clock or 90 degrees, you would have gotten three decibels. So at 270 degrees, you're also gonna get three decibels. And 305 is of course the conjugate angle of 55. So if you have five decibels at 55, which is easy to memorize, then you're also gonna get five decibels at 305. And then we finish our complete revolution, our first cycle after 360 degrees, you're back at the top of the face wheel and that gets you six dB. And now you go on your second round trip and on your third round trip and on your fourth round trip. Every time you find yourself at the top of the face wheel, you gain six decibels, whereas every time you're at the bottom of the face wheel, you lose everything. And that concludes the explanation on the addition of sine waves using the phase calculator. And um, may it serve you well, and hopefully I will see you uh, during, the, uh, during the next video. Stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.